Detective Nick suddenly witnessed a terrifying scene. The gold dealer girl who was greeting him on the roadside had a horrific transformation on her face. The detective was so startled that he jumped, but the next second, the gold dealer girl returned to normal. At first, Nick thought he was seeing things, but unexpectedly, as soon as he started working at the police station, he saw a criminal transform into a monster in front of him. When he looked again, the criminal's face had returned to normal. At that time, Nick didn't know that this was related to his ancestral bloodline. When he got home from work, he found that his aunt, whom he hadn't seen in over 10 years, had come to visit him late at night and wanted to tell him about a family secret. To prevent Nick's girlfriend from overhearing, the two went to a nearby park. His aunt got straight to the point and asked if he had been seeing strange things lately and that only he could see them. Just as they were talking, his aunt suddenly sensed danger and quickly pulled out a knife. Suddenly, a humanoid monster appeared and attacked them with a large cleaver, knocking them both to the ground. Just as his aunt was about to be killed, a bullet hit the monster. Nick emptied his clip into the creature, finally killing it. But the next second, something miraculous happened. The creature's face morphed into that of a human. Nick couldn't believe his eyes. To get to the bottom of things, he quickly sent his unconscious aunt to the hospital. Upon waking, his aunt told him that they belonged to the Griffin family, and that their eyes could see things that ordinary people couldn't, namely, the creatures hidden among humans. At first, Nick didn't believe it, but he soon found himself targeted by the creature world. One day, a girl was walking in the park, when she was suddenly attracted by a little red riding hood doll on the ground, completely unaware of the danger nearby. The girl's screams echoed through the park. Soon, Nick received a police report and rushed to the scene only to find a severed finger on the ground, along with a trail of red cloth and broken shoes. Initially, it was judged to be the work of a nearby wild animal. However, Nick discovered a size 45 footprint nearby and an MP3 player that was continuously playing a song, which became the key to solving the case. Not long after, the police reconstructed the shoe print and deduced that the killer was wearing a pair of Martin boots. But finding the killer with only this clue was undoubtedly as difficult as reaching the sky. Unexpectedly, the killer struck again. This time, he disguised himself as the postman and targeted a little girl in a red dress. Two and a half hours later, the police received a report from the girl's family. Nick and his colleagues rushed to the scene and learned that the little girl had gone missing on her way to her grandfather's house. Following this route, they discovered the girl's backpack and also saw a size 45 footprint. Nick followed the tracks out of the park and just saw a normal-looking man in front of him, who, after seeing a few children pass by, turned into a werewolf. Terrified, the man turned and ran. Nick, thinking he was the killer, rushed forward and tackled him to the ground. Soon, a large number of police surrounded the area and conducted a thorough search of the man's house. But they did not find the little girl. Due to insufficient evidence, the man was released on the spot, but Nick was still convinced that the man was connected to the case. At night, Nick looked through the monster encyclopedia that his aunt had left behind and quickly found information about werewolves. It recorded that werewolves had a special fondness for girls wearing red clothes. This confirmed Nick's suspicions. So he secretly went to the man's house in the middle of the night, intending to find some clues, but he happened to see the other party urinating in his own yard in the middle of the night. But the man seemed to sense something and quickly returned to the house. Nick originally planned to sneak into the house, but unexpectedly, the man suddenly jumped out of the window. Instead of killing Nick, the man invited him in for a couple of beers. It turned out that he could tell at a glance that Nick was a descendant of the Griffin family, so he didn't want to cause trouble. The werewolf said that he had long since reformed and insisted on being a vegetarian every day, and that the girl's disappearance had nothing to do with him. But Nick was very clear that the man's act of urinating in his own yard was exactly the same as an animal marking its territory, which meant that there were others of his kind nearby. At Nick's repeated requests, the kind werewolf decided to help him. Soon, the two drove to a forest. With his keen sense of smell, the werewolf could smell the little girl nearby. Then the two got out of the car and applied wolfbane to their bodies to mask their scent. They continued walking forward, and after a while, they found a small house ahead. Just then, the werewolf suddenly transformed into a werewolf. The blood of his kind had stimulated him. To prevent himself from going wild, he had to turn and leave, leaving Nick alone. Seeing that he was outnumbered, Nick called his colleague, Hank. Meanwhile, the killer inside the house seemed to sense someone nearby. He went to the window and looked out, although he didn't see anyone. Just in case, he locked the little girl in the cellar and then jumped onto the carpet, with the table pressed on top of him. Soon, Hank drove over and joined Nick. The two knocked on the killer's door. When the other party opened the door, the first thing they looked at was his shoes and found that he wasn't wearing Martin boots. When the killer learned that the two were police, he acted very calm, even humming a tune. The two made a simple search of the house, but did not find the little girl. They then checked the shoe cabinet, but there were no Martin boots. Thinking they had found the wrong person, they apologized to the killer and left. But just then, Hank suddenly thought of something. The killer realized he was exposed and quickly turned off the lights in the house. The two men reacted and rushed in with guns drawn. Taking advantage of the darkness, 
The killer transformed into a werewolf and attacked the two men, catching them off guard. He then fled towards the back door, but no matter how fast he was, he couldn't outrun the bullets. The killer was shot several times and fell to the ground, and his wolf face returned to normal. Nick hurried forward and asked about the whereabouts of the little girl, but before he could finish his sentence, he was killed. Hank thought that the little girl must still be in the house, and after a thorough search, they finally found the hidden cellar and rescued the trapped little girl. Afterwards, Nick went to the hospital to visit his aunt. His aunt was in a coma due to late-stage cancer. A nurse walked over with a syringe. Nick looked up and recognized the gold dealer girl, the same one who had changed her face at the beginning. Just as Nick was about to stop her, he was knocked unconscious by a needle. Fortunately, the people around heard the commotion and rushed over. The gold dealer girl, having failed, quickly fled the hospital. Afterwards, she got into a car, and the man sitting next to her was Nick's boss, and it seemed they were plotting something. 